Hey everyone, it's Ryan Quintel from Quintel Designs, and today we're going to be doing another Vector Tuts Plus video tutorial. We're going to create a glowing neon sign using pretty much just the appearance palette. Um, this was originally a post back in August uh, of intermediate difficulty, and it's about two hours to complete. Um, we're going to see if we can cut that down a little bit uh, and summarize, cut around the parts so you can see exactly what you need to do to accomplish this effect. It's pretty cool. So let's fire up Illustrator and get started. In Adobe Illustrator, let's make a new document. And this is going to be 500 by 500 pixels. In advanced, if you're using a newer version of Adobe Illustrator, um, let's change the preview mode back to default instead of pixels, but a line to pixel grid you can still leave on. We're going to call this Neon Assign. Hit OK. First, we're going to type out our words that we're going to make neon. In this case, Vector Tuts. Yes, I often speak when I type, <laughs> when it's a headline for whatever reason and any bold typeface will do. Uh, I'm going to use Chunk 5 um, and if you don't have Chunk 5 you can get that from the League of Movable Type.org. It's an open source uh, font for, for use for anyone and it's a really nice looking font. Um, the tutorial also says we should uh, do this in about 70 point. So that looks great. The only thing I'm not too crazy about is this plus here. You can just change that to something that uh, is bold, like an impact. Yeah, that's totally great. Now we're going to center align this. We're also going to align it center in our canvas. And in the type palette with Command T, we can drop down our line weight. And you can see here, um, if you look in my whole setup, I've got the appearance palette separated out for this particular tutorial because we're going to be doing all of our work there. Um, but I like to be able to see my pathfinder, my align, uh, my transform if I want to do exact transforms. The color guide's great for tints, gradients. So there, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you're seeing on the right hand side of my screen. And um, if you're interested in seeing more, you can just, you know, send me a comment or shoot me an email on the website, and I'd be glad to uh, screenshot it and share it with you. So it looks like I'm going to do about 65 points for the line height here. So what I'm doing is chunk five letters, 70 point uh, impact for my plus, and 65 point um, for my uh, line height. And uh, now we're going to take all this and create outlines. So you can right click and hit create outlines here and sort of vectorize this instead of having it as type. In step two of the tutorial, we're going to have to reduce these to basic appearance. So first you'll need to ungroup them. Then here in the appearance palette, you can clear their appearance. And then I group them again after that, now that they're sort of cleansed. And we're going to make two color swatches here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make some boxes so we get our exact colors um, right from the tutorial. And the first color, the author calls for CMYK. And he wants C being 4, M being 55, Y being 70, and K being 0. So you can see the bright uh, sort of peachy orange that that creates. I uh, just hold down Alt or Option and drag it over. And make another one here where the C or the cyan, if you will, is... 5, the magenta is 90, the yellow is 100, and the K is 0. So now we have this sort of uh, amber color and uh, a peach, and if you hit uh, Command Y, you'll still see our, our vector touch is, is there. But the reason why I made these separate um, is because I'm going to save these as swatches. So in our swatches panel, we're going to make a new swatch, and I'm just call this... Um, Amber. We're going to call this right here Peach. Then you can just delete those. And uh, the reason why I did that is because a lot of the later colors, um, even though the author calls for very specific 
um, CMYK values, I'm just going to approximate them with lights and darks of those colors. So, um, you know, feel free to do that same thing or get the exact CMYKs from the original tutorial, which uh, you can link to from the original Vector Tuts post. So here we're going to select these, Command Y, uh, to make sure that we're seeing it normal. We're going to make these gradients, so you can hit period on your keyboard and that'll fill it with the default gradient. And then the first color is going to be our, and we'll drag that down, we'll just start calling this red. And the second one, our peach, drag that in. And this is a radial gradient. And so now you can see these letters have a nice glow to them. We'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Now we're going to put an inner stroke on these, and we can do that in our appearance palette. We'll create a new stroke from right here. And this stroke is going to be about our red color. Um, in fact, it'll be a little darker, so I'll drum it down in the red scale over here. This is going to be a one pixel or one point stroke. And here, with the appearance palette, with the and here in our appearance palette with the stroke selected, we're going to make sure that over here in transparency, we're looking at this being in multiply mode and about 50% opacity. Now we have to put an effect on this one particular stroke. So if you're not familiar with how the appearance palette works, you can apply an effect to every single line item here, um, and you can apply as many as you want. So essentially, you're putting effects on appearances, but you're keeping the same vector object the same. So um, I'll show you that in a second. So we'll go to Effect, um, and here we're going to go to Path. We're going to offset the path. Now, it says that we do a negative 3 pixel offset. We can hit a preview to make sure it's right. And yeah, that's pretty good. I, th I think that's, um, you know, th that'll be absolutely fine. Um, maybe I would cut it down to just two uh, for this particular uh, look, and I'll hit OK. And you can see here that uh, when we zoom in even more, that we have this path now running inside all of our letters. Um, the thing about this is, when we hit command Y, you see that the shape remains the exact same. So all we've done is put on something in the appearance palette and applied an effect to it, but we're not adding a whole ton of data to the file, right? Because all of our points remain the same and intact. Um, next we're going to move on to step four, which uh, wants us to add a new stroke. You can do it from the menu here, where you go add new stroke, add new fill. I like using these little buttons. I'm going to add a new stroke. Now the stroke is going to be yellow, a bright yellow. So I'm going to start off by making this peach my appearance palette. And then over here in the G, I'm going to crank that up. I'm going to put some red back into it so it's a brighter yellow. And right here, this stroke is only going to be half a pixel, half a point. We're going to offset it by 2.25, so effect, path, offset, negative 2.25. Let's hit the preview, check it. It's a little close to our others, so we're going to go negative 1.25, and we'll hit OK. So you remember I changed that original one to be one pixel less, and now look here, we have that half a pixel stroke, it's added on and now we're starting to get uh, that particular look. Hitting Command Y and we can see the shape is the same and you're gonna basically rinse and repeat this um, over and over and over again. Um, in step five we're gonna come here and add a new fill. And we're gonna drag that fill below the original fill. That's contents right here. That would be a group. This fill is going to be another pretty specific number. 
So here we're going to change it to CMYK and put in the author's requirements for the fill color, which is 5.5 for C, 100 for magenta, 100 for yellow, and 35 for black. And here we're going to transform these, so we're going to affect, distort and transform, and transform these. I always like to turn on preview for all this. And now under move, we're going to set this down two and a half pixels. That would be our vertical positioning. And now we're going to go to effect, distort and transform, and we're going to transform this, no surprise. We're going to move it down 2.5 pixels. Turn on preview to see how that looks. You can see that um, negative 2.5, it calls for in the tutorial. Um, I don't know if this is different for CS5, but um, I had to remove it to move it down. So maybe it was negative before, maybe it's a misprint, but either way, um, that's what you, you want, two and a half pixels lower. I'm going to make a new fill. This fill they want is a dark green. So I'm just going to come here and pick a dark green that's pretty dark. Make it 30% and its opacity. And we're also going to put it in multiply mode. Now with its dark green effect, we're going to send this down two and a half pixels, and we can do that with a distort and transform. Transform it. Two and a half down. Hit preview. We still can't see it because it's underneath that red. But this next one's going to be important. We're going to affect path and offset this path by one and a half pixels. So we'll hit preview. And you can see what that's doing. It's like a drop shadow of our already 3D text. And again, nothing added. So uh, I'm going to stop hitting command Y because I think you get the point that we're not really adding anything to the shape. And we're going to uh, keep on moving on this. So now that we have all this done, it's time to trace inside all of these letters. Um, this is really something that you're going to have to do on your own um, because, quite frankly, I'm just as bad as <laughs> the next person at hand tracing everything. But uh, what I'll do is I'll do one together and we'll do E because that's pretty easy. Um, T would even be easier, quite frankly, but uh, I'll grab the pen tool. And here on the E, we're just going to start. I'm going to hold down Shift and just start clicking around. Trying to look as uninept as possible. say that'll probably do it. And then I tap V and that brings it back to the selection tool and then P and that puts me back on my tool and basically that's a, a little bit of a reset so I can come and continue the path and I uh, wow well, what the heck I'm I'm feeling crazy. I'll do I'll do a T with you too. So you can see I'm still on my pen tool, so if I draw once, it's going to connect the path. That's no good. Uh, I want to hit V, then P. Gets me back on. Click, click. I'm just using those smart guides, V and P, because if I click again, it's going to add a point to that path, and that's not what I want. So V, P. Start there. Intersect, going to bring this guy down. V, P. And so you're going to do that rinse and repeat uh, with all your letters, and then come back to me when you have it finished. And that's where we'll uh, leave off at step six. Once you have been a good doobie and have all of your tracing done, as you can see I have here, I'm going to select everything, 
and create a new stroke on it. The stroke is going to be 1.75 thick. And we're going to start off with our red and kind of make it a bit darker by just adding some K to it. Yeah, that's pretty subtle. And we're also going to apply an effect to this stroke, transforming it down the classic two and a half if you haven't seen the theme here yet. Hit OK. We're going to add a new stroke. This stroke is going to be four and a half. It's a really big one. Its opacity we're going to kick down to 20. And we're going to make it a dull yellow. So I'm just going to move magenta all the way down K. We're going to make it more of a whitish yellow. So I'm doing about, we'll say, 5050. Zero, zero. And as just a, a rule of thumb, I like to take these and I like to make each of the strokes rounded edges. So I come here and I click here and you can see select your stroke and right your stroke palette you can make these rounded edges a little bit nicer looking especially on this neon sign because neon tubing is usually more round on the end than it is a harsh flat line. We're gonna keep going and you're gonna build up six strokes here so we're gonna make another stroke on top of these it's going to be four and a half thick. I'm going to go slightly darker yellow. So we're going to add some red to it. More of a gold. And we're going to go 25% on its opacity. I'm going to actually adjust this to four so you can see some glowing overlap. We're going to add another stroke. This one's going to be 2.2. I think it says 2.25 in the tutorial. And the 2.2 we're going to set to be 30. And we're going to go an even darker yellow on that. And then we're going to do one more stroke. This one will be the brightest so a really bright yellow really make it stand out but its thickness will only be 0.5